Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jerry Stafford. I'm the manager here at Van Dorn Pools and Spas in the Shrewsbury location. And well, as you know, uh, as you can look around, we're looking at uh, leaves turning all kinds of pretty colors, falling into your pool and clogging up your skimmer baskets. That's a sure sign for us in the pool business to say that it's time to put your backyard vacation into hibernation. So before you start with any of the chemical lines that I'm about to go through as far as closing your pool is we're going to make sure that your water is in balance. I've got here the Instatest 6, again located at all three of our locations. We're going to go ahead and pop one of these open. Go ahead and dip that into the pool as I'm sure you may already know. And then we're going to go ahead and line this up with our chemicals right here on the back. Make sure everything is completely balanced before we start into adding any kind of chemicals. So the first chemical line that we're going to discuss today as far as closing your pool is going to be sustain. Uh, this is the blue and pink buckets if you're familiar with that. The small tablets that go in the skimmer, the large tabs that go in a cup inside the skimmer. Uh, the way you close this is fairly simple. Uh, the first step is going to be your shock. This is sustained shock treatment available at all three locations. We're going to do one bag of this per 5,000 gallons evenly distributed across the pool. It's always a good idea to give it a nice brush afterwards. And we're going to follow that with our sustained winter shield. This is a chlorine extender. It keeps one part per million as a reserve to last you through the entire winter season. This treats an entire 20,000 gallons, so anywhere from 8 to 10, just use half of this bottle, save it for the next season. Anywhere over 20,000, just grab yourself another bottle. Again, readily available at all three locations. So the next line of chemicals that we're going to be talking about is our oxygen system. If you're familiar with the oxygen system or you have one, you should have a bucket of your Formula O. This one is fairly simple. We're basically going to let your oxygen system run continuously for 48 hours before we do anything. The next step after that is double up your dose of the Formula O. So with this 24 round here, we're looking at about 13,000 gallons. I'm going to do three scoops on a normal weekly dose. We're going to up that to six. Just broad that, broadcast that right across the pool evenly. Let that run for about 24 hours, and then we're going to pop the cover on. So last but not least, uh, for anybody using generic stabilized chlorine as an example, what we use here at Van Dorn Pools and Spas is Duraclor made by Haviland. Uh, these are your regular three inch tabs that either go in the floater or right in your skimmer there. Um, what we're going to use to close this would be just pretty much an algicide and some shock. Uh, what we're looking at is Combat 30, available at all three locations. Uh, Combat 30 will treat pools up to about 10,000 gallons. Uh, anything over 10,000 gallons, we've got our Combat 60, we're up to 20,000. Obviously, if you need to use more for more gallons, grab a couple bottles, maybe a 30 and a 60, and toss them in. You're also going to toss them in with our Zapit Shock. Uh, zap it shock uh, you can find at all three locations as well we're basically going to do one bag per 5,000 gallons uh, diluted in a very clean bucket uh, distribute that pretty evenly across the pool give it a good brush let it run for about 12 to 24 hours my rule of thumb I use is just do it the night before you're gonna close close the pool the next day so prior to installing the cover on your above ground pool, we have a few options. Uh, one for the people that aren't running on a well is very simple. We're just draining the water. Uh, never fully in a vinyl liner, but what you're looking for is to drain the water below both the return and the skimmer so that no water escapes. Now for those of you with a well, we have a couple options as far as plugging up both the return and the skimmer. Let's walk into the return first. For those of you who have a Doughboy pool, this is what your return looks like. What we're going to do is we're going to unscrew just the top face plate, place that aside, take this eyeball right out, place that aside. We're going to go ahead and find our winterizing disc. What this does is it's going to pop right in there in place of the eyeball, and then you're going to clamp this right down on top, thus plugging the hole, no water runs through. Second option for those of you who have a radiant is a plug that looks something similar to this. We're basically going to unscrew your eyeball as well. Then we're going to go ahead and thread this right in. Make sure you do have that O-ring on. 
Go ahead and thread this right in. I've always found that you could use some sort of screwdriver, now be careful, on your liner when you use this, uh, some sort of screwdriver or even a tool that Hayward does sell for these to place right in this little slot and then give it a crank to tighten it up. Never over tighten, you can always crack, but that about covers everything for the return. On to the skimmers. So for those of you who are saving water and maybe on wells here, uh, we do have two different options. One's fairly simple, it's called the compensator. So that's this little round jug here. We have a plug at the bottom. And for those of you with doughboys, you will need these compensator extensions. I always recommend two just to get up to the water line. How this works is this is going to plug into the bottom of the skimmer hole. And when the water fills up, when it freezes, this takes the impact of the freeze instead of the outside of the skimmer walls. So moving on over to the skimmer, we're gonna go ahead and take your skimmer lid off. Make sure that your basket is completely empty. And I like to set this aside with all of my materials like my uh, winterizing disc or eyeball or anything like that and just put this in a basket, store it in a safe place so you don't lose it. Now, before you plug this in, we're gonna make sure that your pump is off. And we're gonna go ahead and place this plug right down into this skimmer hole. Now, as you're placing the plug in, this plug is threaded. So we're going to need to thread this plug down in until it actually sticks inside that hole and does not remove itself. Always apply some downward pressure to make sure it stays in. Once you have that secure down in there, for those Doughboy customers, again, as we look, the water level is still above that compensator, so we're gonna take one, and we're just gonna slide this right in to the top of this. And then we're gonna take the other one, just for safe measures, and slide that in right on top. And then we're good to go with that. Uh, we also do have for Radiant, anybody owning a Radiant or in-ground pool, we do have in-ground versions of this, works the same way. We also do have a little cap here that unscrews, so uh, if you have any kind of hard plumb, you can pour your antifreeze right down inside. So the final option that I'm going to be showing you today is called the Aquador. Now this one's going to take a lot more initial work, but once it's done, it'll provide a lot more ease for your following seasons. The way that this works is, for the Doughboy customers here, we have a Doughboy replacement faceplate. Now this you are going to have to take off your original faceplate from inside the skimmer and just replace it with this one. What this has is a nice little lip on the inside with a Tupperware kind of faceplate there. So once that faceplate is on, that replaces it indefinitely and then seasons thereafter, we're just gonna go ahead and slap this Tupperware container on. Uh, we also do have some for the Hayward skimmers and Radiance as well. Uh, and we do have replacement lids so you don't have to buy the entire set. These are readily available at all three locations too. Okay, so now that we have added our chemicals, let it circulate for 12 to 24 hours, the next step for uh, closing your pool is going to be your equipment. Uh, as we have here, this is a whole Doughboy setup. Most of you should be familiar with this. All you'll need to do so is your little pump wrench here. You just gotta set of pliers for the drain plug because not necessarily hand tightened every time. And then a quarter inch nut driver or flathead for all of your hose clamps. Uh, the first thing that you're gonna do is make sure that there is absolutely no debris in the pool. So at this point I have my trusty dusty Prowler over there. This is the Prowler 910. Uh, that is readily available at all three locations. 910 is more so for flat bottom pools. We've also got the 920 for any, anybody with a deep end and wants to scrub some water lines. So I've got that thing doing the work for me. Great investment, by the way. Um, once that's all cleared up, we're gonna move into hoses first. Uh, as you can see, we do have our compensator in here and I do have my return plugged up. So as we're taking these hoses off, we're just gonna take this nut driver here and we're gonna go ahead and start from the skimmer and work your way back. Okay. 
So for those of you with uh, Gorilla Grips, uh, we do know as we're coming down to these hoses that these pump lids can be kind of stubborn. So we do have this nice little pump wrench here. Again, available at all three locations. The way this works is you're just gonna lock that right in and should be able to twist with ease to pull this pump off. The reason we're doing this is to make sure that there is no or sorry, no air locks to keep water in. The other reason is to get any kind of extra debris out of your little skimmer basket. Once that's all done, we can go ahead and tilt this pump up to make sure that we have 100% of water out of this pump. I just left the hoses on because I do like to leave them attached to the pump side just in case I uh, decide to lose anything over the winter season. <laughs> I like to tilt this all the way upside down and make sure you get every little drip out. And what you can do with this pump is store it in a nice place like a garage or a basement preferably to keep it out of the elements and out of the cold. So moving on to your filter, we do have a sand filter here, very similar to a DE filter. Uh, the DE you're probably going to have to take apart, hose out, make sure you get all the old DE out, go ahead and soak your grids in a filter cleaner. Uh, we do have that available at all three locations as well. Uh, first step with your filter, we're going to go ahead and take this valve here and go ahead and turn that to winterize. So once that's on winterize, we're going to go ahead and unplug everything. We've got a backwash port here just to increase air flow to help drainage. Go ahead and take that off, and we can set this in your skimmer basket again, as I had said before, just to keep everything safe. Next step, we're gonna go down towards the bottom, and you'll see a little drain plug here. This is where your pliers will come in handy. A lot of times these are not finger tight. Be careful on how tight you actually squeeze these drain plugs, they can break. However, we do have replacements available. Now, once you get this drain plug out, on the inside, you should have a little screen to block the sand from pouring out. A little loss of sand isn't terrible, but if you don't have the screen that is inside this hole, we do have replacements available as well. Once that cap is off, again, go ahead and toss this right in your skimmer basket for next season. And I like to make sure that this drains for a full 24 hours. As you can see, it is a very slow leak. To help with drainage, I also like to tilt this with the plug side down and just leave that laying in the yard for the next 24 hours. Once that is completely drained, you can either go ahead and hand truck this over to your garage, shed, anywhere that's a dry place. If you don't have it, an awning built over top will suffice or even try to put a tarp tightly around it so no water drips down inside the filter and we're good until next season. So for those of you that do have an oxygen system, as you can see, it is hooked up to your filter. We do want to completely disconnect this from the filter and as well drain out and store inside. The way that you'll be able to do this is get a firm grip on either side of these hefty pipes. Uh, make sure it is unplugged. <laughs> get a firm grip here and we're gonna turn lefty loosey and just thread this all the way out. Now once this is out, go ahead and give it a couple tilts, a couple different ways. Go ahead and play with the valve a little bit. Make sure that all the water is completely out of everything. And go ahead and store this in a nice dry place as well. Okay, so moving on to the final steps, which would be putting the cover onto the pool. Uh, we have stacked up here a few things that you may need and a few things that you definitely need. Uh, one of the most essential things would definitely be your pool cover. We're working with a 24 round. As you can see, the cover size is 28 foot. The overlap is essential for this kind of work. Uh, next thing we've got here is your cover saver. This is pretty much a siphon pump to help you manage the amount of water that's on top of your cover throughout the winter season. Uh, a few things that will go into detail here on how to fasten it down will be your cover lock juniors. We've got the double water tubes for anybody that has a deck around their pool. 
And for anybody that doesn't have a deck around their pool, we also do have this nice cable that comes inside your cover box. All right, so moving on to the installment of your pool cover. Uh, we always like to have the green side up, and if you do have some space in the yard to lay it out as so, makes things easier, especially for ovals. You can figure out which side's the long side and which side's the short side. Uh, it's also a good idea to have a partner helping you. That's my coworker, Ryan, over here, up here at Shrewsbury Van Dorn. So first step we're gonna do is actually take this cover right at the side that you're gonna be dragging from. We're gonna flip it over the back here, just to kind of keep the cover afloat, kind of create like the front of a boat kind of motion. And then we're just gonna go ahead and walk this cover straight on. As you can see, we're not sinking, so that's a good sign. Coming down to the ends here. Just flip that over top. And we have this set on, so the next moves we're gonna talk about is fastening this cover down. So the uh, first method of fastening I'm gonna show you today is the cable that comes inside the box of your cover. You're just gonna open this bad boy up, and inside we have a nice coated cable so the cable doesn't rust on you as well as your crank so the crank we're gonna set aside in a safe place for now as we open up this cable we're gonna go ahead and run this cable through these reinforced loops that are at the base of the cover what I like to do and as far as threading this cable I like to go from underneath and over top the long sides of the, of the uh, reinforced rings, as you can see there are shorter sides and long sides. I always like to do over top the long sides so that the wind keeps everything down and then thread back through on the short sides. So up and down, up and down, all the way around your winter cover. So as we're coming down near the end of the uh, threading of the cable here we're right at the skimmer which uh, does have the compensator I just I just leave the lid in there uh, lock that into position once we're covered up under here we're gonna go ahead and take your cable and we're gonna make sure that it goes underneath the skimmer and then we're gonna go ahead and start back with our reinforced loops again So now that we're done with threading the cable all the way through the reinforced loops, we've got our little crank here. The way that this crank works is we're going to take uh, first line up the holes, all the holes from one side to the other in the inside. We're going to take our left side of the cable, we're going to go through both holes here and right out the back. And then our right side, we're going to go through the first cable, the first hole, and then we're going to go ahead and through the second hole. And again, this is going to come right out the back. So as we pull this tight enough, what we're going to do is we're going to go around and make sure that all of the slack from this cover is inside of the pool so that when we crank this cable down, we crank the cable right up underneath the top rails. The more slack in the pool, the better. Uh, that comes down to rainwater, any kind of condensation that can lay on top. Water is a good thing. It helps weigh the cover down from blowing up, as you can see right there. Uh, a couple inches of water on top here is a good thing, but with the slack, you want that slack to at least make a 90 degree angle on your pool water so that whenever that water does land, we're not pulling this cable and pulling on top rails. Okay, so we've got all the slack inside the pool. We're gonna give this uh, cable here one last tug. Keep that tight and you'll have a little hand crank here that you're just gonna turn to give that one nice little even tightening. Once you're completely locked up, we are good to go for the winter. All 
All right, so uh, for those of you that may have either lost your cable or don't prefer the cable, or even for those of you that have resin top rails with bigger, bulkier plastic top caps uh, that may break when the cable pulls, uh, we do have these little cover lock juniors. Now on here is a little set of directions here. It says to put the flat back piece, these are a two piece uh, container here. So it says to put the flat back up underneath the top rail, put the cover over the flat back, and then snap the top side on. So for that first example, we're gonna go ahead and take your flat side. I like to stick a thumb in here, it makes it a little easier. We're gonna go up underneath to the top rail and give that a nice slap on. So we're gonna go ahead and move the cover over top and then take your secondary piece and slide that right on over top. Again, keeping slack in the pool. Uh, moving on to the second example that I've learned uh, throughout closing pools is that you can take your flat end over top of the cover as well, and then take your secondary and just give it a second clamp. Whichever one works for you, don't fix what's not broken. Uh, what we usually do is we use about two for every pool cover, sorry, for every top rail that you're gonna use your cover cable on. If you're not going to use the cover cable, I do recommend three per top rail. So as we're standing up here, this is for all of you people with decks. Uh, we do have a nice decked in pool here. What we're going to use to secure your cover down uh, for anybody that doesn't have any kind of space between their deck for the cable or those cover locks that we had already covered, these are called water tubes. These are dual channel water tubes. We're just gonna open this up. And you can see you have two spouts here. So what I like to do is just stretch this out and grab as many as you need for the length of your pull. Just stretch them out. And I like to lay them out sequentially around the pool itself. But once you're done with that, we're gonna unload these little holes here and you're just going to fill these with a hose as such. So as you can see when this starts to fill, uh, it'll fill up and then once that water line gets right below this little notch right here, we don't want to overfill because obviously water does expand when it freezes. So once you fill up both of these tubes here, we'll move on and I'll show you exactly how to place them. So we do have our water tube completely filled here. Uh, we're gonna play a small game of imagination because I do not have a cover for this pool at this moment in time. But what you're gonna do is place the cover on as I had previ previously explained. Uh, you're gonna put all of your slack inside the pool so you get that nice 90 degree angle. And then for those of you who have a deck with your top rails above it, this is a good thing for these water tubes. Basically what you're gonna do is lay some slack over top of here, and then you're gonna go ahead and inch your water tubes on top of that cover and right up next to those top rails. I like to do right up next to it because any kind of displacement that can pull this water tube at all doesn't get the momentum to pull and go up over top and fall into the pool. So once you've actually gotten this all the way up against the top rail, you wanna see about at least two inches sticking out from behind, but again, most of your slack inside the pool so it doesn't pull these in. Go repeat this step all the way around the perimeter of the pool and you should be good to go. So for our final step here, we've got our cover saver. Uh, we do have videos previously posted uh, to check back on how to properly install and operate these. But those of you that already know, we're just gonna take this, toss that out to the center of the pool, and this should monitor all of your uh, water displacement with this hose here. It does come with a cover siphon pump. And lay that out and point it towards your neighbor's yard so you don't have to deal with the excess water. So that, uh, that does conclude our video for today. Uh, I hope I covered everything that you need to know about closing your pool. If I did miss anything or you do have any further questions, please don't hesitate to ask any of your friendly neighborhood Van Dorn Pools and Spas.